You visit the doctor and they tell you that scientists can now fix broken parts inside your body by editing your genes, like using magical scissors to cut and paste your DNA. Amazing, right? But then your neighbor says that scientists are playing God and messing with nature in scary ways. So what's actually happening here? Today, I'll explain gene editing to you like you're five years old, and by the end, you'll understand what scientists are really doing, why some people are excited, and why others are worried about this incredible new superpower. Turns out, gene editing isn't actually magic scissors. Shocker, I know. It's not tiny doctors with microscopic tools performing surgery inside your cells, and it's not scientists randomly changing things to create monster people with three arms. What it is, actually, is a super precise way to find specific instructions in your body's instruction book and fix the typos. Imagine your body is like a massive Lego castle, and every single Lego brick was put together using an instruction book. The instruction book is incredibly detailed. It tells your body exactly how to build your eyes, your hair, your heart, everything. This instruction book is called your DNA, and it is stored in every single cell in your body. Say it with me. D-N-A. It stands for something really long and sciencey, but just think of it as your body's ultimate instruction manual. Now, this DNA instruction book is written in a special code using only four letters, A, T, G, and C. Think of them like four different colored Lego bricks. The order of these letters matters a lot, just like how the order of Lego bricks matter when you're building something. If your instruction says, put the red brick, then the blue brick, then the yellow brick, but you accidentally put red brick, green brick, yellow brick, your castle might have a wobbly wall or a door that doesn't work right. Sometimes, there are typos in your DNA instruction book. And these typos are called mutations, and they can cause some problems. Maybe the instructions for making your eyes work properly have a typo, so you can't see too well. Maybe the instructions for making a protein that fights off sicknesses have a typo, so you get sick more easily. These typos aren't anyone's fault, they just happen sometimes. Like when you're writing a really, really long story and you accidentally spell a word wrong. For a really long time, if you had these DNA typos, there really wasn't much that doctors could do about them. It was like having a Lego instruction book with mistakes, but no eraser or whiteout to fix them. You just had to build your castle with the wonky instructions and hope for the best. But now, scientists have invented something incredible. Molecular scissors that can cut out the typos and paste in the correct instructions. These molecule scissors are called CRISPR. It's pronounced like CRISPR just like when your mom puts vegetables in the CRISPR drawer of the refrigerator. CRISPR is like having the world's tiniest, most precise pair of scissors, along with the world's tiniest, most accurate copy and paste function. But here's the really cool part. These scissors are smart. They can be programmed to look for very specific sequences of those A, T, G, and C letters. Kind of like using the find function on a computer to look for a specific word in a really long document. Let's say you have a DNA instruction that's supposed to read A, T, G, C, G, T, A, C. But instead, it reads A-T-G-C-T-T-A-C. Now, there's a wrong letter in there, a T instead of a G. The CRISPR scissors can be programmed to search through all three billion letters in your DNA instruction book, find that exact wrong sequence, A-T-G-C-T-T-A-C, cut it out, and replace it with the correct sequence, A-T-G-C-G-T-A-C. It's like having a super smart spell checker that can fix typos in the most important book ever written. And here's where it gets really exciting for doctors and patients. Remember how I said DNA typos can cause diseases? Well, if scientists can fix those typos, they might be able to cure diseases that we've never been able to cure before. Diseases that have made people suffer for thousands of years might finally have a solution. Let's talk about a disease called sickle cell anemia. Now, people with this disease have red blood cells that are shaped funny. Instead of being round and squishy like tiny donuts, they're shaped like crescent moons or bananas. And these weird shaped cells can't carry oxygen as well as normal cells, and they can get stuck in blood vessels, causing terrible pain. This disease is caused by just one tiny typo in the DNA instructions for making red blood cells. Just one wrong letter out of three billion letters, and it causes a lifetime of suffering. But with CRISPR, scientists can potentially fix that one wrong letter. They can take some of a patient's cells, use the molecular scissors to cut out the typo, paste in the correct letter, and then put those fixed cells back into the patient's body. The patient's body would then start making normal, round, healthy red blood cells instead of the sickle-shaped ones. It's like fixing a single typo in a recipe and suddenly your cookies come out perfect instead of burnt. Scientists are also working on using gene editing to fight cancer. Cancer happens when cells in your body start growing and multiplying when they're not supposed to. Kind of like if some Lego bricks decided to keep building themselves into a giant, messy pile instead of following the castle instructions. 
Now, some scientists are using gene editing to modify immune system cells, the body's natural security guards, to make them better at recognizing and destroying cancer cells. It's like giving your security guards better uniforms and stronger weapons so they can protect your castle more effectively. There are also inherited diseases, which means that they get passed down from parents to children through DNA. Huntington's disease is one example. It causes brain cells to break down over time, leading to problems with movement, thinking, and emotions. If scientists could use gene editing to fix the DNA typos that cause Huntington's disease, they might not only cure people who already have it, but also prevent them from passing it on to their children. I mean, imagine being able to stop a terrible disease from affecting entire families, generation after generation. But here's where things get complicated, and why some people are worried about gene editing. The same technology that can fix diseases can also be used to change things that aren't necessarily broken. What if parents wanted to use gene editing to make their children taller or smarter or have different colored eyes? What if they wanted to give their children advantages that other children don't have? Now this is where the playing God concern comes in. Some people think that scientists shouldn't be changing human DNA beyond fixing serious diseases. They worry that if we start editing genes for non-medical reasons, then we might create unfair advantages for some people, or accidentally cause new problems that we don't yet understand. It's like the difference between using your LEGO skills to fix a broken wall versus completely redesigning the castle to make it bigger and fancier than everyone else's. There's also the question of what counts as something that needs to be fixed. Some people who are deaf don't consider deafness a disease that needs to be cured. They see it as part of their identity and culture. Some people with dwarfism feel the same way. If scientists develop ways to edit genes to prevent deafness or dwarfism, it raises difficult questions about what kinds of human differences we should accept and celebrate versus what we should try to change. Another big concern is about editing genes in sperm, eggs, and very early embryos. Changes made to these cells would be passed down to future generations, not just affecting one person, but potentially affecting their children, grandchildren, and their descendants forever. It's like making changes to the master copy of the LEGO instruction book that will be used to build all future castles. Some scientists think that this could be a good thing if it means preventing serious diseases, but others worry that we don't yet know enough about the long-term consequences. There are also technical concerns. Even though CRISPR is incredibly precise, it's not perfect. Sometimes the molecular scissors might cut in the wrong place or the paste function might insert the wrong sequence. These off-target effects could potentially cause new problems while trying to fix the old ones. It's like trying to fix a typo in your instruction book, but accidentally erasing a different important word in the process. The cost and accessibility of gene editing treatment is another important issue. Right now, these treatments are extremely expensive to develop and provide. If gene editing becomes a common medical treatment, will it only be available to wealthy people? Could this create a world where rich families can afford to give their children genetic advantages while poor families can't? Some people worry that this could make existing inequalities in society even worse. And despite these concerns, the potential benefits of gene editing are enormous. Beyond treating individual patients, scientists are exploring ways to use gene editing to solve bigger problems. They're working on editing the genes of mosquitoes to prevent them from carrying diseases like malaria, which kills hundreds of thousands of people every year. They're editing plant genes to create crops that can grow in harsh climates to provide better nutrition, potentially helping to feed the world's growing population. Researchers are also using gene editing to develop better medicines. They can edit the genes of bacteria or other cells to make them produce useful proteins, like insulin for people with diabetes. It's like reprogramming a factory to manufacture exactly what you need. The field of gene editing is moving incredibly fast. New techniques are being developed that are even more precise than CRISPR, and scientists are finding new ways to deliver gene editing tools to exactly the right cells in the body. Clinical trials, careful tests to see if treatments are safe and effective, are happening around the world for dozens of different diseases. Many countries are developing regulations and guidelines for gene editing research. Scientists, doctors, ethicists, and policymakers are working together to figure out what kinds of gene editing should be allowed, what kinds should be prohibited, and what safety measures need to be in place. It's like creating rules for a powerful new technology to make sure that it's used responsibly. Some gene editing treatments are already being used to help patients. In 2020, two women with sickle cell disease and one man with a related condition called beta thalassemia were treated with gene editing versions of their own cells. Years later, they're doing well and no longer need regular blood transfusions. More patients are being treated in ongoing clinical trials, and the results are encouraging. The future of gene editing is still being written. Scientists continue to discover new ways to use the technology to fight diseases, improve crops, and solve other problems. And at the same time, Society continues to grapple with the ethical questions and potential risks. 
It's a conversation that includes not just scientists and doctors, but philosophers, religious leaders, patients, families, and regular people who want to make sure this powerful technology is used in ways that help humanity. So, let's go over it again, just so that you really, really get it. Gene editing is like having incredibly precise molecular scissors that can find and fix typos in your body's instruction book, your DNA. These tools, especially one called CRISPR, can potentially cure diseases caused by genetic typos, from sickle cell anemia to certain types of cancer. But the same technology that can fix serious medical problems could also be used to enhance humans in ways that raise ethical questions about fairness, identity, and what it means to be human. The playing God concern isn't just religious objection. It's a broader worry about humans taking control of evolution and potentially making changes that we don't fully understand. But supporters argue that if we have the power to prevent suffering and cure disease, don't we have a responsibility to use it? So, the next time someone mentions gene editing, you'll know it's not science fiction or magic. It's a real, powerful technology that's already helping some patients and might be able to help many more in the future. It's scientists using incredibly precise tools to edit the instruction manual of life itself, with the potential to cure diseases that have plagued humanity for millennia. Whether that's miraculous medicine or dangerous meddling might depend on how wisely we choose to use this incredible new power. To recap for my five-year-old brain trust, gene editing lets scientists fix typos in your body's instruction book using super precise molecular scissors, which could cure diseases but also raise big questions about how far we should go in changing what makes us human. You totally get it now though, right? Now go forth and think deeply about the amazing possibilities and important responsibilities that come with editing the code of life itself.